In this video, I'm going to tackle a hot topic in multiple sclerosis, one that patients increasingly ask me about in clinic. Is giving the contrast agent gadolinium for an MRI safe? Will it damage my kidneys? And is it sequestered in the brain? I'm going to answer these questions and more, so don't turn away because all that learning starts right now. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. Today I'm going to discuss a hot topic in multiple sclerosis. The question of whether or not gadolinium, the contrast agent used in the MRI, actually hurts patients. Does it damage kidneys, and can it become sequestered in the brain? So let's start our discussion reviewing why we use contrast in the first place. When you have an MRI, we're learning some very important things about your brain. And when we inject the gadolinium contrast dye into your vein, it, it runs through the course of the blood vessels and it lights them up so that we can see them. Now, the, the contrast agent isn't is supposed to leak out of the blood vessels into the brain tissue. But in the setting of multiple sclerosis, if there is a new acute lesion, I mean new as in like right now, then the blood-brain barrier has been irritated and it becomes more leaky. And so the contrast dye that you put in the vessel can leak out of the blood vessel, crossing the blood-brain barrier, and actually cause a small portion of the brain to light up with contrast. This teaches us a tremendous amount about the lesion, specifically about the timing of the lesion. Lesions only enhance with contrast for a couple weeks, then that enhancement goes away. So if you obtain an MRI and you see a lesion that enhances after you give contrast, it tells you something that you can't otherwise learn. It tells you that it's brand new. Now, in the setting of MS, we use the MRI for one of two purposes, diagnosis or monitoring of therapies and monitoring of the disease. Those are the two different reasons why we use the MRI. And contrast, the contrast MRIs aid us in both of those things. If we turn our attention to the diagnosis of MS, and I have uh, several videos on this channel about how an MS diagnosis is made, so I'd encourage you to check those out if you want to hear more about that topic. But specifically related to contrast, if you see a contrast enhancing lesion, that assists in the diagnosis. It allows you to make a more rapid diagnosis if you have certain lesions that enhance with contrast and some that don't. And so it's very useful, I would say it's actually super important, to give contrast to the, with the MRI when you're trying to make an MS diagnosis. Now once someone has MS, and hopefully they've started on a disease modifying therapy, we typically want to get an MRI of the brain about once a year. And the reason we're doing that is we're looking for subclinical disease activity. We're looking for new spots that show up even if the person doesn't have new symptoms or a new clinical attack. Because we now know that seeing new spots show up tells us that that therapy is not working, that the disease has remained active, and what we're doing right now might not be the best option. It's very important information. Now as it relates to contrast, if you give someone contrast for a follow-up screening MRI, and you see a new lesion that lights up, there's no question that that's brand new right now. It teaches you about the timing of the lesion. When you get an MRI without contrast, you still learn a tremendous amount, but you don't learn about the timing of lesions the way that you do if you give contrast. So again, in my opinion, I like to give contrast during follow-up MRI scans because of the information it teaches me. In the last several years, however, there's been some concerns raised about the safety of contrast dye. Number one, uh, risk of damage to kidneys, and number two, deposition in the brain. And so I want to address each of those separately. Starters, let's talk about the kidney. Prior to having an MRI, it's a reasonable thing to check kidney function. In my hospital system, we do a quick lab test called a creatinine to make sure that the creatinine clearance or the kidney function seems okay. And as long as the person has normal kidney function, there should be no concerns whatsoever about their ability to process, metabolize, and get rid of the contrast gadolinium agent. So the take home as it relates to kidneys is, is your kidney healthy? If you have renal failure or if you have damage to your kidneys, then you need to ask your MS neurologist about the safety of contrast. But if you don't have any known kidney problems, and we can check labs very easily to make sure that your kidneys are okay, 
I see no concerns whatsoever in having an MRI with contrast. Now let's turn our attention to deposition of contrast in the brain. Recently, there's been concerns for deposition of gadolinium, the contrast agent, in the brain. Meaning, you get the dye through your vein and some of it gets stuck in the brain and it stays there over time. And obviously that's a disconcerting thing to think about. Now to be specific, there's two locations in the brain where there's been concern for the deposition of gadolinium. And I'm gonna throw up some images right now. So here you see a picture of the dentate nucleus. This is an MRI of the back of the brain, the cerebellum, and the arrows point to the area called the dentate nucleus. This uh, MRI image shows us the globus pallidus. The globus pallidus is part of the basal ganglia, another deep structure in the brain. And so there's been observations that there's been a deposition of contrast seen in some patients who've had uh, multiple MRIs. And that would make anyone ask a bunch of questions and become concerned. So let's unravel it. Number one, there's been no clinical consequences with the observation of a deposition of contrast. What I'm saying is, although this has been observed in some patients, it hasn't caused any clinical problems. And it's very important that we point that out. The second and more important point is that we only see the deposition of gadolinium with certain types of gadolinium. Gadolinium, the contrast agent, comes in lots of different flavors, and some of them are called linear contrast molecules. Linear contrast molecules are the ones that we've associated with deposition in the brain. So linear is bad. There's another kind of contrast, another kind of gadolinium, called macrocyclic gadolinium. Now, macrocyclic molecules are not associated with deposition in the brain. So very simply, if you're going to have an MRI and you would like to have contrast, or your doctor would like you to have contrast, make sure that they're not using linear contrast molecules. If they're using macrocyclic molecules, you have nothing to worry about. In summary, contrast is a very important part of the MRI. And I, as an MS neurologist, find contrasted MRI scans to be very valuable, both for making an MS diagnosis and for monitoring response to therapy. Given my druthers, I want my patients to have contrasted scans. With regards to kidney function, as long as the human's kidney function is in good shape, there's no problems giving contrast. And if there's any questions, it's easy enough to check a lab to ensure that their kidneys are okay. As it relates to deposition in the brain, the take home is very simple. Make sure that you're not using linear gadolinium molecules. Make sure that the type of contrast, the type of gadolinium used is macrocyclic, and then we don't have any problems. Once again, my name is Aaron Boster. And thank you for learning about MS with me. I'll wrap up this short video with a question to you. The question of the day is, what will you do the next time you need an MRI? Are you comfortable receiving gadolinium or do you still have concerns and would opt out? Leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you as would the rest of this growing community. Until my next video, take care. If you're impacted by MS and you wanna up your game, please consider subscribing to the channel. You can do that right now by clicking on my face. Go ahead, seriously, click my face.